Do you love playing old school RuneScape, but you're tired of the same old boring default graphics? Wouldn't you want your client to look like this? Or even this? And some of you guys might even want it to look like this. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I uploaded a video a few years ago showcasing the at the time brand new GPU plugin on RuneLight and how you could get better graphics. That video still works perfectly today, but there have been a lot of new updates ever since then, and that video has been getting a lot of views. It's actually the most viewed video on my channel, so I figured I might as well make a 2023 updated video for you guys. Keep in mind you do need about a mid-tier PC to run these new graphics really smoothly, but there are tweaks and settings that you could do that will make this run a lot smoother, even on a higher performing low tier computer. So hey guys, don't forget to hit that like button if this video helps you out at all, and let's get into it. Alrighty, so what you need to do to go from GPU to the upgraded graphics that isn't HDOS is you want to go over to the arrow up top, open your sidebar, go all the way down to the bottom, click on plugin hub, and type in the search 117. From here, you can download the 117 HD plugin. Let's click install. Your screen will kind of bug out for a second. And there we go. That's pretty much it, to be honest. These are the settings that I have. I have 50 draw distance, MSAA times 4 anti aliasing. What anti aliasing is, is let's say if we turn it off, you see how when I zoom in the lines and around my hair and the net and stuff like that, it's all kind of jagged and stuff like that. Anti aliasing lets you smooth that out a little bit. Personally, I do MSAA4 because it's not too bad on my computer. However, if you have a really beast of a computer, you could go up all the way to 16. It's super, super smooth. However, that will use a lot of performance. And of course, if you have a lower end PC, you would either disable it or run MSAA2. With UI scaling, I use by linear. The UI scaling affects, well, your UI. And by linear looks like this. So it's perfectly normal. If I turn it on nearest neighbor, you see how it gets a lot more jagged and sharp. By cubic Mitchell looks like this. I don't really know the big difference here. Same with by cubic Catmull ROM. It's a little bit more, it looks a little bit more crisp actually. I might actually use this one from now on, I don't know yet. And then there is XBR, which you see a lot in YouTube thumbnails, where it kind of tries to smooth it out as much as possible. However, I usually use by linear. Honestly, I don't know what anisotropic filtering is. I leave it at 16. I don't know what that is. I have unlock FPS unchecked, and then I have my V-Sync mode set to adaptive. Honestly, I don't really know what this does too much either. I have my FPS target to 60, even though RuneLight, I believe, only goes up to 50, but I have it at 60 nonetheless. Here are your colorblind settings. I have mine on none, but here are the options that you could choose from if you do have colorblindness. Flashing effects, I have mine turned off. And flashing effects are pretty much like whenever you're at Barrows and it's raining and there's lightning, it will flash your screen like there's lightning. To be honest, I'm not too into that, so I have mine off. On to saturation and contrast. I have both of mine on higher so that I have kind of a more vibrant gameplay. However, you can turn these all the way up to highest and all the way down to none on both. But personally, I use higher. Brightness, I have as 30 so that it doesn't get too bright. I mean, you could turn it up quite a bit all the way up to 50. But, I mean, that's not really necessary unless you like playing that way. So I set mine to 30. Okay, moving on to dynamic lights. I have mine set to some, which is 50. If you have a really good PC, you could do many. If you have a lower end PC, you want to set that either to none or few. What dynamic lighting is, is basically how many light sources from in-game that affect your gameplay and how it looks. So if I turn mine off completely, the lights at Draenor don't light me up when I walk near them or anything like that. As well, whenever I have my Phoenix pet out, there is no lighting. However, if I turn dynamic lights on, there we go. A light source is now hitting my body from this lamp right here and my Phoenix as well. And if you have it on many, it just kind of, if I zoom out, it'll show more like all of the ones all the way over here in these houses from the fireplaces and so on. So I have mine set to some because I have about a little bit above average mid-tier PC. So yeah, I also turn on projectile lights. That's whenever you're casting a magic spell, it lights up the spell whenever it's traveling across the world. So turn this on if you can, it looks pretty cool. I have NPC lights on, atmospheric lighting on, and what atmospheric lighting does is it actually changes the way the game looks in certain areas. Like for example, Barrows is pretty dark, 
and it changes the brightness and the things around you to match that aesthetic. Also, another time that atmospheric lighting is enabled is whenever you go to Drainer Manor, for example. Let me show you guys right here and you'll see. Looks really cool. Once you load into Drainer Manor, it darkens everything as you can see here. Because we have all this lighting turned on, the lamps make you glow, the phoenix is glowing, my lantern's even glowing. Everything looks really, really cool. Moving on, I have shadows turned on. What that basically does is, well, it adds the shadows. We turn it off, as you can see, there are no shadows, and now there are shadows. I have my shadow quality set to extreme, but I really usually don't run that. I don't know why it automatically selected that. I usually have it on high. It's pretty good. It's a little bit blurry, but it's good enough for whenever you're playing the game. It adds a lot to the atmosphere. Shadow distance, I have it set to 30. Uh, I have expand shadow draw turned off and hide fake shadows turned on. Okay, moving on to the environment section. I have fog depth mode. This is what it looks like currently on none, where it's just a sharp edge around your render region. I turn mine to dynamic, so it's automatic and it looks pretty good. It has a nice fade kind of fog effect. However, if you don't like it to be dynamic, which means it changes in some areas, you could set it to static. And then from here, you could change how deep you want the fog. You can go all the way up till literally everything's all foggy. Or you can bring it down to zero and it's that sharp edge again. Basically, static just lets you decide what you want it to be and it keeps it there. I have ground fog turned on. Uh, I don't really know an area where this is relevant other than Barrows. But in Barrows, it puts like a fog on the ground. It looks pretty cool for the area. So I have that turned on. Default sky texture, I have it on 2008 HD tan because I feel like it's the least distracting when you're playing. However, there's 117 blue. Rune light skybox. Old school black, which looks pretty good too. And as I said, 2008 HD tan. I prefer 2008 HD tan. Uh, I just think it looks the best, but it obviously is completely up to you. I have override sky color turned off. I have model textures turned on, ground textures turned on. And then I have texture resolution set to 256. The other option is 128. I don't really notice a big difference here, but uh, yeah, if your computer is running slowly, switch it to 128. I'm sure it must help at least something. I also have ground blending turned on. What that does is basically, well, it blends all of the squares together because if I turn it off, you could see the walkway. It has a sharp edge to it. You could see all the individual squares of the game. If you turn on ground blending, it gets rid of those, smooths it all out, looks a lot better. Underwater caustics. I turned that on. It looks pretty good. It adds like an effect when you're underwater to make it look like there is sunlight coming down on you. It has a really cool underwater effect. It looks really good. Just turn it on. And then we have the HD Tizar reskin. I have mine turned on. I like the way it looks. Basically all that it is is the glowing cracks on the floor. It turns them from red to orange and back and forth, whatever one you like. It's completely up to you if you want it or not. And then model caching, I have all of this turned on except for clear cache when loading. And I have my model cache size to 2048. I don't know what any of that stuff does. I have never touched it. And then miscellaneous, I have HD Infernal Cape turned on. And I have winter theme turned off. However, you could turn on winter theme whenever you want. It's a personal preference. This is what it looks like. Just put snow everywhere. It looks pretty cool. It's good for holiday videos, stuff like that, or getting in the holiday mood. But honestly, I just keep mine off. All right, moving on to the next plugin. We're gonna leave the plugin hub by clicking the back arrow next to the search bar. And then we're gonna type in camera. Once you have camera open, you want to have expand inner zoom limit checked. That lets you zoom all the way in as far as you want, pretty much. And then you want to expand the outer zoom limit. I have mine to 250, so I could zoom all the way out here like this. And if I want to run somewhere, I could click over there and my character will run all the way over there. You could click way farther than you can with the minimap. Expand pitch limit is turned on. Control function I have set to none. Reset zoom position is 512. Zoom speed I have to 50. Zoom speed is how quick your character zooms in. If I turn this up, let's say to 80, it's like way faster. Or if I have it set to 20, it's like way slower. I have mine set to 50. And then all of this other stuff I have turned off. There's also another option called camera smoothing. You actually download that by typing that into the plugin hub search. 
However, I already have it downloaded. This is actually pretty nice. If you turn this on and have it set to smooth rotation, smooth zoom, and have it set to 50 smoothness, it's very smooth when you zoom in and out. It's not nearly as blocky feeling. I don't know how to explain it. I have mine off though, because I don't like how it zooms me in. I don't know, but it is a completely personal preference. Also detached camera you'll see here. I have mine turned on. That lets you detach your camera. So if I wanted to, let's say, stick my camera right here, I have my toggle set to the numpad. So let me hit the numpad. And now if I click over there, my camera stays here, but I am obviously moving. So yeah, that could be used for some clips if you make videos, stuff like that. And then to turn it off, as I said, mine's numpad and the star key. If I hit that, I'm back to normal. And then of course there is HDOS. And honestly, I don't use HDOS. I just put it in the video to show you guys that it exists. It is officially allowed by Jagex. They did say that you can use this client. This gives your game a completely 2009 feel. Apparently it has some plugins. Uh, it doesn't have nearly as much as RuneLight or nearly as much support as RuneLight. But if you like the 2009 graphics, go for it. There's basically no risk and you won't get banned for using the client. Personally, I don't like it very much. It's just, it's kind of, I don't know. I, I just don't like it. But hey, if you're feeling nostalgic, you could download the client and try it out. Just not my cup of tea. But yeah, guys, that about sums it up for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to drop a like below. It really helps out the channel. And if you're new here, be sure to check out my Skiller series. And that series is essentially a restricted account where I can only stay level three and I can't train any combat skills whatsoever. So that means I can't even go to Canifest. I can't do a lot of things. There are restrictions because I can't do certain quests and things like that. And my goal is to actually max my Skiller out with 99 all non-combat stats by the end of the year and i'm pretty sure that we're gonna get there i'm actually really close already so yeah if you're interested in that hit the card that has the playlist on the top of the screen right now and you could watch that but anyway guys as i said hope you enjoyed the video and i hope to see you in the next one